a seemingly more complicated version of the two body system is one where we have two objects that appear to be moving in different planes or in different dimensions. So we can see here that we have an object that is at rest or that is on a surface. And this object is obviously going to be moving in the horizontal plane where our five kilogram object, as we can see, is going to be moving in the vertical plane. Now, seemingly, we would think that this means that it's a two dimensional system. But what we are not noticing is that this pulley here essentially converts the one dimension into the other. So what we can see is that when this 12 kilogram object moves to the right, inevitably the five kilogram object would move downward. And so we can see this as a linked motion. And therefore we say that it is actually still one dimensional motion. And we would therefore answer this question in the same way that we answer any other two body system where we start by drawing a free body diagram for each object. So for the 12 kilogram object, we show that there's a force of gravity acting downward. Since this object is on a surface, there's a normal force acting upward. There's clearly a tension force pulling this object to the right, and we've been given a coefficient of friction, which tells us that there will be a friction force acting to the left, and we can show that this is our 12 kilogram object free body diagram. For the five kilogram object, we would show that there are only two forces acting on it, those being the force of gravity acting downward and the tension force that is acting upward. What's important here is that we realize that if we say, let the right be our positive direction for the 12 kilogram object, that necessarily means that downward must be our positive direction for the five kilogram object. From this, we can see that there is a force of gravity that can be calculated as 117.6 Newtons. And because the normal force is the only force acting vertically upwards, that means that the force of gravity must be equal to the normal force, in this case, 117.6 Newtons. And that allows us then to calculate the friction force acting on this 12 kilogram object by saying that is the product of the coefficient of friction given as 0 0.3 and the normal force that we have just calculated of 117.6, which tells us then that the friction force acting on this object is going to be 35.28 Newtons. We can now follow our usual approach where we write down a Newton second law expression for each one of these objects. For the 12 kilogram object, F net is MA, F net is all the forces acting to the right, our positive direction, which is tension, minus the forces acting to the left, the negative direction, which is friction, equal to mass times acceleration. Tension is our unknown friction. We know to be 35.28, and the mass of this object given as 12. We can do exactly the same for our five kilogram object, F net is MA, where we now say, it is all the forces acting in the positive direction, those being FG. And we subtract the forces acting in the negative direction, tension, that must be equal to mass times acceleration. Force of gravity acting on a five kilogram object is five times 9.8, 49, minus tension is equal to five A. We can then simplify each of these expressions. For this expression, T is equal to 12A plus 35.28. And for this expression, T is equal to 49 minus 5A. Then once again, because we have been told that this is a frictionless pulley, and we can see that this is all a single rope, we can say that the tension in this object, T1, is equal to this tension here, since tension in each of these ropes is the same thing because it's the same rope that tells us that 12a plus 35.28 must be equal to 49 minus 5a and therefore we can solve for the acceleration of the system to find that it is 0 0.81 meters per square second and then depending on the object for the 12 kilogram object that is to the right and for the five kilogram object that acceleration is downward and then we can use this acceleration to calculate our unknown tension by substituting in that value for acceleration tension is equal to 49 minus 5 times this acceleration 0 
81. And that tells us then that the tension in this rope is 44.88 newtons. So once again, this type of question may seem more complicated because it appears to act in two dimensions. But what we need to remember here is that because these, these two objects are linked by a rope that runs over a frictionless pulley, the motion of one object still means that the motion of the other object will be the same. And therefore, these objects will still have the same acceleration and the tension in that rope that links the two of them will still be the same. And therefore, we can treat this as we would any other two-body system.